This documentary is both a tribute and a memorial to the valiant efforts of the Wachi guerrillas, 48th Squadron. They are the unsung heroes who fought side by side with the Filipinos and the Americans during World War II. By remembering their struggles and sacrifices in order to free a nation, we hope to immortalize for the generations to come the wonderful friendship of the Filipinos with these gallant men and their compatriots. Nasubukan ko talagang matatapang. Karami sa alam, maulang nga ba pa ang baril. Umis na may grupo silang mga dalawang dan. Pinakamarami na siguro yung mga 50, 60 yung mga baril na may hawak na baril. Ang mga insik na nakasama namin, talagang... Mapagmahal. Today, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Shocked, the United States declared war against Japan. Ten hours after the treacherous attacks, the Japanese invasion of the Philippines began. The next four months saw American and Filipino soldiers desperately fighting a losing battle against a better prepared Japanese Imperial Army. On April 9, 1942, the inevitable happened. But the An province fell into the hands of the Japanese. It was the largest surrender in American and Filipino military history. The country was at the mercy of the rising sun. Kinuko nila yung mga pagkain. Kaya nagkagutong-gutong yung mga Pilipino. Kami kumain ng yung ano na sagi, yung sapo sa sapo. Marami, basuso, kamote. More than 60 years after the war, Alfredo Pelayo still vividly remembers the atrocities committed by Japanese soldiers against the Filipinos. A son of the head of the guerrilla group in Candaba, Pampanga, a province north of Manila, he was only 14 years old when Japan occupied the country. He says the cruelty of the Japanese knew no bounds. Ang tao pag mabawa kunay ba siya sa may suspect kunay ba sa mga guerrilla uli nila itatali rin eh nakaano mang sasabihin yung ipangipit ng baga yung sakal lang tinatawag yung sapoy sa apoy pababagahin na yan mo sa ari mo ipitig ganun yung tao ilalagay sa drum at saka nagagatungan sa ilalim. Dito nun, maraming nangyaring usidente rito. Ang bagsik ng hapon, walang pinipili eh. Pag sinabing ano ka, isa kang kalaban, kahit na babae ka, aanuhin ka. Bienvenida, then 18 years old, lived through the horror of losing her family to Japanese brutality. Inipon yung lalaki, may lubid silang dala. Tinali dito ganun. Haba nila, ilan ang lalaki, labing isang lalaki. Dinala sa bundok yung lalaki. Pagdating sa bundok po, lahat sila pinatay. Nang 
mga atyuhin ko, bayaw ko, pinsan ko, nakasama lahat. Bienvenida became a member of the Hukbong Bayan Laban sa Mga Hapon or Hukbalahap, a group of guerrillas based in central Luzon that was part of a broad resistance coalition against the Japanese. Ang pag-aasa namin basta ililigtas namin sa kahiyaan ang Pilipino na huwag nilang abusuhin. Alam namin babalik ang Amerikano sa Pilipinas. Yan ang pangako nila eh. Pero hindi kami umaasa na kaya kami lalaban dahil sa babalik sila. Colonel Emmanuel Ocampo was still a student and a member of the Reserve Officers Training Corps, or ROTC, when war erupted. He says the war gave birth to an unlikely breed of guerrilla soldiers. Maraming sumama na hindi dating sundalo. Dito sa mga taong hindi dating sundalo na resumpong isa, kasama na lahat ng nationality. Mayroong Meron pa ngang German eh, na sumama dyan. Maraming sumama na hindi Pilipino at nagpatuloy ng gera. Of the unsung heroes, Ocampo vouches for one group that stood out during the war. Ang malalakas ang loob na lalaban ka po ay natalo na kayo. Ayun, isa sa mga grupong yun, yun yung Wachi, yung Chinese. Even before war came to Philippine shores, Chinese nationals in the country already had so much hatred for the Japanese. Eh, yung panahon na yun, dito may doon na grupo ang tawak, anti-Japanese group. Only 13 years old when he arrived in the Philippines in 1936, Di Kong Hee lived with his brother in San Pablo, Laguna. Like most Chinese nationals, he was in the country to look for greener pastures. But barely a year after Kong Hee settled in the Philippines, the Second Sino-Japanese War erupted. The Japanese captured the city of Nanking, and an orgy of carnage took place at the former capital of the Republic of China. The Japanese Imperial Army murdered and raped hundreds of thousands of Chinese civilians and disarmed soldiers within six weeks of the war. Widespread looting occurred and estimated 300,000 people were killed in what is known today as the Nanking Massacre or the Rape of Nanking. To this day, the pain, the sorrow, and the loathing still linger. Wala naman kasanang sina ba kayo inatakan ang hapon? Simply, makagali kami dahil sa wala, wala, wala. Hindi naman kami kalaban, hindi ba? Ngayon, pumasok sa sina, pinapatay yung tao. History professor Augusto De Viana of the University of Santo Tomas and the National Historical Institute traces the involvement of Chinese nationals in a war outside their homeland to their strong sense of nationalism. Sa katungkulan nila na ipagtanggol ang, uh, ang kanilang lahi. At pangalawa, parang paghigan din na rin laban sa kanilang nang, nang, nangyari sa kanilang mga kaanak sa China. The Chinese considered the Philippines their second home and did not want the country to suffer the same fate as Nanking, said Deviana. The resolve to fight the Japanese was fueled by their idealism. Wachi, karamihan doon ng iba mga mga negosyante galing sa Maynila, iba ay mga trabahador, iba doon ay mga, uh, mga small businessmen, mga so iba doon professionals, iba doon mga estudyante. So, meron silang idealismo. The Federation of Philippine Chinese Labor Associations did not waste time to stall the Japanese invasion. It formed the Committee for Resisting Japanese Aggression and Protection of Chinese in the Philippines. The plan was to launch guerrilla warfare. The committee dispatched 30 Chinese youth to a village near San Fernando, Pampanga for training. Kong Hee joined the underground intelligence unit of the guerrillas. 
he distributed newsletters and delivered ammunition to the guerrillas. Ako kutsero eh. Ano, alam mo, yung, yung mga diyaryo, dinalaki doon sa ilalim ng mga ilalim ng karesa. Katulad, nagdala ko sa Kalawang, nagdala ko sa Tanawan, kung saan-saan. Ang kriya, kung walang underground, hindi mabubuhay. Ha? Dahil yung isinide kasama, ano ha? Punta siya sa Lucina. Ha? Kunyari, yung Lucina, di ba? Labas yung may horesda. Yung bibili ng yung tiyo, tiyo na, tiyo na isa. Dakay sa kahon. Yung baril dakay sa ilalim ng tiyo ng isda. Bago lala sa siyang pabla. By the time the Philippines fell under Japanese rule, the Chinese guerrillas had already been mobilized to fight a war that was not really their own. A month after the fall of Bataan, the Chinese nationals regrouped under one unit, the Philippine Chinese Anti-Japanese Guerrilla Squadron, or WACHI. Born in Mandili, Pampanga, WACHI was also called the 48th Squadron, a tribute to China's new 4th Army and 8th Root Army. It was composed of Chinese youths previously assigned to different Filipino guerrilla units. Soi Kwan was 15 years old when he joined the Wachi. Born in China, his family migrated to Negros in search of a better life. He was studying in Manila when the war broke out. According to Sui Kwan, the Wachi initially holed up in Mount Pasbul for almost three months. Every day, they went through intensive political and rigid military training. Aside from amassing needed ammunition, Wachi was able to beef up its army. From 52, the guerrilla group became a 78 member squadron. In high spirits, the Wachi fighters moved back to Mount Arayat in August 1942 
and immediately joined the offensive of Filipino guerrillas. In the three months that followed, the newly trained Chinese guerrillas participated in more than 20 battles around Central Luzon, attacking and destroying puppet municipal governments, Japanese transport facilities, and military camps. Chua Boon Ming detailed Wachi's every victory in a book entitled Experiences Which Made a Mark in My Life. One time, Japanese soldiers crossed the river and went into the forest. The Filipino People's Army fought back. They were indomitable. When Wachi learned about the attack, it went to reinforce the Filipino troop. With attacks coming from two sides, the Japanese retreated in defeat. Many of the soldiers were killed and injured. The river changed color. The enemies hated Wachi and considered it a thorn in their side. The exploits of the youthful Chinese guerrillas spread throughout central Luzon. Wachi fighters became a main target of the enemy. The youthful Chinese guerrillas had several close calls, according to Bun Ming. In one of their routine trainings in the forest, the enemy caught them by surprise with airstrikes. Chunara Gotting Gabby Hiding in the forest, Boon Ming's group sought refuge in a house whose owner allowed them to stay for the night. Eh, <laughs> 